a prayer, all right? Our Father and our God, we praise your name for the great God that you are. Lord, thank you for uh, giving us an instruction book on life and how we should live. Uh, you tell us uh, things that's good for us. You give us examples and you give us uh, uh, the p people's lives that go on before us and we can see their mistakes and where they made the right uh, decision. And Lord, we can use that for a pattern in our lives. We pray tonight as we teach, uh, we'll uh, you lay on our hearts or what we should say and what we should do, do for we love you for you're a great God and you're you do great things in Christ's name we pray amen amen all right tonight we're going to uh, uh, do a little teaching that's a little bit different we're going to we're going to uh, not exactly follow the pa pastor's way he's been teaching on uh, on Psalms T tonight I want you to turn over to just to, for one one uh, 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 verse there, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 11. I've used this this uh, verse uh, often, and I, I, I see it, uh, I like it, and I, I see it, want to use it, and every time I, I start studying the Bible and I read the Bible, I, I, rem I remember this verse right here, and I, I make things apply, uh, apply to my life, and it works out a little, little bit better that way. 1 Corinthians 10, 11 says this, now all these things happen unto them for examples, are examples. All these things, these stories we read in the Bible, all the things in the Old Testament and the New Testament, these, these things happen to, to those people for an example, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Now, uh, examples is an example. It's a it's a picture. It's a illustration. It's something that you can learn by. Uh, now they got the word admonition there, and that means for our benefit. These things are written and recorded for our benefit, so that we might uh, hear and we might learn, and we might see, we might go to school, as you might say. We might learn by that, and the same things apply today in uh, other people's life, but especially in, in principle. Uh, and the scripture, as we see things in the scripture, we can learn so much from it. For example, uh, we read about Noah in the scripture, and we know about the great flood, how Noah built an ark, uh, and uh, for, the, for the safety of him and his family, God told Noah he's going, the earth is going to be destroyed because it become so wicked, and so uh, Noah built an ark, and he labored for a long time and built an ark, and when he got the ark built, God moved them in on the inside, and he closed them in. He closed them in. Now, that, that, that's a picture a real good one for you and I that someday God's going to come back Jesus is going to come back uh, as, and he's going to pour out his wrath upon the earth for the people rejecting him and, uh, but to the people who have accepted him and believe in him they're going to be raptured out of here we were going to be saved. We're just like, just like Noah and his family. Or there was, uh, he he didn't have to go through that flood. He was he was safe within the ark. And so, and there's another good example is too is is found when. And by the way, over in Hebrews 11:7 it says, Noah moved with fear, and he built an ark for the savings of him and his family. He feared God. God, God told him, said, no, this is coming. Duh. And he says, uh, uh, you, you need to do something about it. He, told him, he gave him dimensions and everything about the ark. So Noah moved that, built an ark for his family. And that's a good example for you and I to get our family in, get our family in. And so we come down to the next uh, illustration is uh, Abraham. You know, Abraham, he uh, had Isaac, him and Sarah at their elderly age. And uh, God told Abraham, so now Abraham said, I want you to go into Mount Moriah here and I want you to sacrifice your son. To sacrifice him, and that would have been a hard thing. But Noah, I mean, Abraham did exactly what God wanted him to do. And whenever him and Isaac was starting up the hill to go to the sacrifice, Isaac said to him, said, we got the fire and we got the wood. Where, where, where's the sacrifice? 
where's the sacrifice? He, he's talking to his dad this way. And boy, I imagine that one might have broke Abraham's heart too. But uh, uh, Abraham said, my son, God will provide a lamb. God will provide a lamb. Well, as you know, he was going to sacrifice. He was going to be obedient to God and do what God told him. But he went to, to sacrifice Isaac, and God told him not to do that. Uh, he, he provided a ram for him, and, 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 and he was caught in a thicket. But that was looking forward to the day when Jesus Christ would come. He's called the Lamb of God. When, when he was baptized by uh, John, John said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Here he's, he came down as a Lamb of God, our, our sacrifice for us. So we can learn a lot by, by those things. Uh, we can uh, certainly... Uh, uh, apply them to our lives and we can see that they have a lot of meaning sometimes we don't get right away when we read, read God's word but every, everything in there is for our benefit if we'll take them to heart I, uh, we uh, we taught, had a rest zone service this week down here in, in, in New London and I, I taught on the three uh, the three the two people that was crucified with Christ one on the right hand and one on the left hand and that's the picture of you and I I said this is a story about God and it's about you and it's about me we were there you were you're one or the other you're one of those people that was hanging on one side or the other you you were there uh, when no the, and then the, you you know about the thief he, he he was condemned to die and he was dying and uh, he was here with Jesus Christ on in the middle cross he was getting ready to die too the son of God who's got in the flesh he was getting ready to live life too. And this, this uh, thief on the cross looked to Jesus and he said, Lord, he called him Lord, 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 remember me in thy kingdom. That took a lot of faith, didn't it? Sure, he was, he was on the cross just like he was. But he said, Lord, remember me in thy kingdom. And so... He and to Jesus said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. So we were there. See, you were one that accepted him, or you were the one that rejected him. He's he's a man on the middle cross. He come to this world to divide. He come into the world, the world to divide. So then we got he uh, the scripture uh, is comes along and, it, and we go for years between the Old Testament and New Testament. Uh, Malachi, the last, the, last, uh, the last book in the Old Testament and, and then Matthew, the first book in the New Testament. There's 400 years that's transpired there. They're looking for their Messiah. All, all, every one of the prophets, the, the, the uh, writers, they look forward to the term to Jesus Christ coming someday, being the Lamb of God. They're Messiah, uh, and they looked for that, and they they uh, uh, was 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 uh, uh, was a great anticipation, but had been 400 years between the Old Testament and the New Testament and no new revelation from God. They had the written word down in the new, uh, Old Testament and sort of they lost sort of lost interest not everyone not everyone some people were still interested and so when jesus did come the world was full of religion uh we had the scribes and and uh, uh we had the sadducees and the pharisees and other groups of people and they all had their own doctrine and uh, sometimes if they they studied the bible but then they added a lot of stuff to it a lot of stuff to it and so uh when jesus christ come he caught them complete, completely by surprise they wasn't looking for him they was looking for a messiah they was looking for a king they was looking for a, a knight on a sh riding a white horse and uh, jesus didn't come that way he come as a lowly oh incidentally the next time he comes he'll be that kind of god a guy he'll be god almighty uh, with all powerful but this time he come to be a servant he come to be a lamb of God. He come to die for you and I and for all those people of the earth that would re accept him. And 
he came in that, in that lowly, they weren't looking for him in that state. He came as born in a manger. And then he made, as he taught, he did so many miracles, uh, raising the dead and all kinds of miracles. Then he said this, then he said, if you know God, you should know me. Said my father and I are one. If you've seen me, you've seen God. We're one. In other words, Jesus said this, I, God is a spirit. I am the manifestation of that spirit. I'm God in the flesh. That's what Matthew says in Matthew. Uh, Emmanuel, that's what that means, God in the flesh. He comes to God in the flesh. A lot of times they had a hard time believing that. They had a hard time doing that. But he done all kind of these kinds of miracles, and he did all these things. And then we come, we come over into, uh, I want you to turn to, to uh, Matthew 16. Matthew 16, and it, and it gives, you, gives us something here that uh, uh, what I really want to talk to, to you about and, and this one right here uh, where he, he comes to him and after doing all these kinds of miracles and all these things and he talk, talk, was talking to him and he preached to him and stuff and, and, and the people you think surely the people that that uh, would study the Bible more, study the Old Testament more, would would accept him because there's been so many things written about him. I don't see how they could miss that. But but apparently they did. They uh, did here. So uh, chapter 16 in verse and uh, Matthew it says this: uh, the Pharisees. Also with the Sadducees came and tempted him, desiring him that he would show them a sign from heaven. Wait a minute, he'd been giving them all kinds of signs, proving that he's God, and read, doing all these things, the miracle that we read, uh, read about in the New Testament. And here they come to him. These, these are the, the elite scholars of that day. These, these are the head of the churches. Uh, these are, and they won't, more signs from heaven. More signs from heaven. And Jesus said this in the second uh, verse there. He answered and said unto them, When it was evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. In the morning, it will be foul and wetter today, for the sky is red and lowing. Oh, you hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the time. Hey, the scripture speaks of me, said that Messiah would be coming, and you're the scholars, you're the study students of the the history of the, the Bible, and you should know. Uh, but you don't. He said, You're a real good weatherman. You're a real good weather, but good weathermen don't get us to heaven. Good weathermen don't do anything to satisfy you. Said so you're good weathermen, but you're but you're uh, you're you're in a very very uh, very poor at discerning the the time that it is. You're very poor about discerning my time. Because I'm what the scriptures say about. They've been speaking to me. They've been talking about me. And here I've come to fulfill the scripture and done all these miracles to proving that I am God and you will, you will not believe. Well, they was too busy. They was too occupied. Uh, they, uh, they had other things to do. Uh, sometimes I, I, uh, I think maybe uh, we are the same way today. I think maybe uh, today Jesus Christ, you talk to pe most people about Jesus Christ and uh, tell them he's coming again and most people don't believe you. I remember probably 30 years ago I was a witness to a fellow here in New London and we was out in his barn and I was a witness to him. He said, come on, Ed, I, come out here. I want to show you something. We stepped outside the barn. He said, looked up in the sky and said, where is he? Where's he at? He said, that's been over 2,000 years ago he said he was going to come back. And I said, hey, he's not been back. He's not going to come. Uh, 
I, I couldn't convince that guy. I couldn't get well. That guy knows now because uh, he's not with us anymore. He he he's he met God even as his judge or as his savior, and so that uh, all the people. So he said uh, the, the the scribes and so forth. They had a political agenda to go. They they wanted to be politically correct. Anytime you want to be politically correct, it's not God's way. They. God and, and, and being politically correct, is, uh, they don't get along real good, real good. Uh, they, they, just, they can justify everything. And that's what these scribes and Pharisees and, and Sadducees, they did. They, they wanted to be politically correct, satisfy everybody. They wanted to stay in authority. They wanted to stay in as a ruler, and they wanted to be ahead of the people. Oh, they, they were too, but they were too busy with things in life. And they got caught up and they didn't recognize Jesus when he was right in front of them. They, when God was right there, he wanted to help them. He wanted to solve their problems, just like he is today. God wants to help people. He's in the business of helping people. His laws are always right and he designed us and made us and he knows what's best for us. You'll never find, you'll never find anything in the scripture that tells you to do that's bad for you. They're always good for you. They're always good for you. But people want to do other things. We're the same thing today. I'm afraid we're going around down the same path today. I'm not talking about the church crowd that's saved and faithful to the Lord. I'm talking about the people as a whole. They're doing the same thing as the scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees did in Jesus' day. They're questioning him. And they're turning to something else. And there are too many other things to occupy their time. They're preoccupied with their time. We are preoccupied. We, when I say we, the world is preoccupied with doing things that they want to do. They're preoccupied with things. I like the scripture in Luke 12, 15, where it says, a man's life consists not in the abundance of things that we possess. Oh, if we could get that through our head. Hey, it's not what we possess. It's not the cars, the big houses, the, uh, the fine clothes, uh, the big entertainment things, the big football games. Uh, uh, it's not the, 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 the smartphones, the cell phones. It's not the, not the computers. We can all, all wound up in those things. The, the, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. Jesus said to the... Said, to the, to, the, to the Pharisees and to the other people. Unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Unless you believe that I'm God in the flesh, unless you believe that I, I come to, into this world and I am come from heaven, my Father and I are one, unless you believe that, unless you believe that, and they, they would not believe that. They fail to recognize Jesus. Are we doing the same thing today? Are we doing the same thing today? I tell you, you could be real busy and I can be real busy. Every day we got umpteen things we want to do. I just told my wife this afternoon, man, I think I'm ready for a winter. I got my old wood and I all stacked in my stairway there. We got the one flower bed cleaned out. We got all that stuff done. But, you know, tomorrow there'll be, there'll be some more stuff. There'll be all, all, all kinds of stuff. To, 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 but you got to, God says, you take time for me. Don't get too busy. Don't get too engrossed. Don't get too entangled in the world and you forget about me. Now, that's why when Jesus Christ come, he, he, he come head on to, to, for these religious people. He, he, their they, they paths intersected there, and they would not believe him. They wanted their own way, and people today wanted their own way. Uh, they, they're, they've got too many things they want to do and they want to accomplish in life, and uh, that's, that's the way they're, they're going, going to go. Well, if this is the situation, if Jesus come to the to people then, and a, mo, uh, and a lot of people, a lot of people believed on him. A lot of people believed on him, but uh, 
the, the main ones that you would think that would embrace him wholeheartedly and the ones that would would know the most the ones that would would uh, study the Old Testament and know that inside and out you would you would think you would think that they would recognize him right away but they didn't recognize him right away they didn't recognize him right away so they didn't recognize him at all because he didn't feel fit their bill he had uh, he had some uh, things going uh, they they wanted to do things their way they had their own religion uh, they wanted to do things their way God says no it's got to be my way it's got to be my way uh, it reminds me a little bit today like uh, we have a lot of different religions a lot of different denominations a lot of in uh, uh, sometimes uh, a person can get taught up, caught up in a denomination and think their denomination is the way. Uh, you know, Jesus says, I'm the way. I'm the way, the truth, the light. And no one comes to heaven except by me. Don't, don't get caught up in church denomination and put that before the Bible, before God. Uh, you, you just don't do that. And then, it, then he says, I tell her, he said, I go away. If I go away, I'll come again. Jesus Christ is coming again. We've been looking for years and years for Jesus Christ's coming. Now they did in the Old Testament too. They looked forward to Jesus Christ coming and they had a lot of signs and a lot of places where he's going to be born and all, all kinds of stuff there was written about him. Now I tell you, there's a lot to be written in, in, in the Bible and the Old and the New Testament given the signs of, that we live in. Uh, we're not, not just knowing the weather. It said there's, there's spiritual signs that you know what time and God's timetable. Uh, we, if we look at, uh, look at our own self and keep our own timetable, we say, we're busy all the time. We've got so many things to do. Well you, well, you better be looking at God's timetable. God's timetable. So I'm going to point a few signs out to you that we, that, uh, that's pointed out to us like there was in the, uh, to, the, to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But uh, Jesus is coming again and Daniel even tells us what a nation or what uh, country will be in power at that time. Daniel said it's going to going to be somebody from the revival Roman Empire. There they're going to rise up, and uh, it's the same people that was or same empire that was in existence at the time of Christ. It says they're going to be and and revive and come back together. That country, those countries are when Jesus comes back again. Well, that's in my lifetime and your lifetime that this has happened to revive Roman empires and come in market countries of Europe. And uh, uh, we, we've seen that. This is, but this is one of the signs. Another sign, Isaiah and several other writers said, another sign is when I come back again, Israel is going to be back in the, the land that I gave them, that they gave, God gave Abraham. Incidentally, you know why Abraham uh, said yes? One of the reasons why he said yes to God, when God said, you take Isaac, your, your only son, for begotten son, the only son between him and, him and Sarah. And he said, take him up there and, 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 and sacrifice him. To me, you know why Abraham went? If you, you look over and read over in Hebrews, it says, now remember, God had told Abraham on several different occasions, I'm going to make from you and your seed a great nation. You're going to be as the sands of the sea. This land over here, I'm going to give to you and your offspring. You know what, uh, what he believed? 
believed, he believed, Abraham believed, if he sacrificed Isaac, that God was going to raise him up. He already promised him that he, from him, him and his seed, uh, so many, uh, p the people of the world was going to be blessed and so forth. Uh, matter of fact, if, if somebody, uh, let me let me give you the scriptures and you you turn over there and 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 and, find, and, and read this to me here. Read it real loud when you find that thing, and uh, it's, it's found in uh, it's it's a. Uh, is, wait just a minute here. Let me get my notes together. That's found over in uh, uh, Hebrews 11, 17 to 19. Hebrews 11, 7, 17 to 19. Somebody read that real loud. Hebrews 11, 17 to 19. This was what Abraham thought. This is what he, Abraham thought. Anybody got that? All right. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received See, accounting that God would raise him from the dead, because God already told him he would bless him, and his his seed will multiply. So God told him that, and and Abraham believed him. And God says something, and you read into your Bible, say it, it's, it's it's a fact. It's, it's God says it, it's a fact. So he 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 did that. He did that. So Abraham. Uh, was was faithful in all that he done. But you, we read over in, uh, in Isaiah and several other places. In the latter days, God's going to bring Abram, uh, Abram's descendants, which is the Jewish people, back to the to the land which He gave them, and that, that's Israel. And that's been that's in my lifetime and your lifetime. We become a nation, 1948. And then on Zechariah, he said. God said, and Zechariah said so through uh, Zechariah, that all nations, all nations shall turn against Israel. All nations. They're a little bitty nation about the size of New Jersey there. Uh, they got about 8 million people right now. Uh, and look at the millions of people that surrounded them, and they hate them. They hate them. Uh, somebody uh, asked David Ben-Gurion, said, how long will the Jews will have to suffer this? And how long will the Muslims keep coming against us? He said, this will go on as long as the Jewish or as the Muslim people, uh, uh, as long as they uh, don't love their children as much as they love killing us. Or hate, hate it. I got that all turned around. As long as they, they, they hate Israel, and says, so as long as they they uh, hate us, and uh, they they'll, they'll they'll keep destroying us, and they'll destroy their own kids. But when they learn to love their own kids, he said, they'll they'll want what's the best for them, and what's what's uh, that will will protect them the best. And we see now on the news how these young people go in and uh, they're practically committing suicide and they must be trained by that. Somebody is pushing them to, to do that. Go in and trying to kill the Jewish people with screwdrivers and knives and stuff and they get themselves killed and so forth. So uh, as long as they, uh, they they don't love their children and as long as they don't love themselves the love of their children has got to be greater than the, the hatred that they have for Jewish people. And it's not natural for all the people of the world to hate the Jewish people. It's greater than that. It really comes down to where it is God and Satan. God and Satan. Uh, God is love. Satan is hatred. Satan is hatred. Okay, and Ezekiel, this is another sign that we're in our day. Ezekiel says, 38 and 39, in the latter days, he said that Russia and her Muslim allies, and you, this, this has taken place even right now. 
Russia is lining herself up with the Muslims pe people. Uh, Iran, she's uh, in alliances with Iran and Turkey and uh, uh, those other, um, Ezekiel 38 and 39 mentions five or six countries that, that's gonna come down and attack Israel someday with Russia. And that's happened in my uh, mine in your lifetime. Paul says this this way, another sign. He says, man is gonna be with man. Uh, Romans 1 27 they're going to love themselves they're going to be without natural affection men with men, men and women with women he says this this is prevalent in our lifetime now 30 years ago or 40 years ago or uh, 20 years ago uh, Everything was uh, real quiet and stuff, but right now they are, they're on a takeover and so forth. But, but Paul mentions that, that without natural affection. This is not natural. Timothy come along and he says, tells us one of the signs will be that in the latter days, towards the end, there's going to be a falling away. There's many going to be departed from the faith. It's not going to be you because you're going to be faithful to the Lord. You're going to be faithful to the Lord. You're going to trust Him. You're going to rely upon Him. Uh, that's what we are. We Now, other people might depart, but just don't let it be us. Just don't let it be us. And we got to be on the lookout at all times. Uh, beware, unless you stand, unless you you find out that maybe somewhere along the line you're you, you're goofed up. I like I like what Paul says. I he said I die daily, I die daily. He said he said I'm dead to sin. A dead person cannot sin. He's dead to sin. He's dead to sin. So you be dead to the things of that the temptations of the Lord. All right. What what can we do? What should we do? Uh, I like what uh, what Timothy says. To, he says, "Continue in the things that you've learned. Be strong in the Lord. Hold fast to that which is right. Don't give in. Some other people will. Other people will. Some people you know might do that. Don't don't let that affect you. Don't let that, uh, that uh, affect your faith. They afraid to part from the faith, or faith, uh, faith uh, find themselves in, a, in, in, in sin and so forth. Uh, don't let that affect us in that sense. We we might have compassion, and we might even go to them and uh, try to plead with them and and get them uh, uh, give them good advice. But if, don't don't let that don't let that affect you. Uh, he said, you continue, continue in the word. He said, and we got to be aware of our enemy. See, our enemy, old Satan, to, today, even now, he would like nothing better to get you and me fighting at each other. He would like nothing better for me to say something that just got under your skin and Boy, you got so mad, you're just going to quit church and you're not going to come back anymore. Or that pastor, he said this, and, or he didn't say this, or uh, he preached too long, or he didn't preach long enough, or uh, he takes time too much time for Mona, or he, he shouldn't spend more time with Mona. You can pick anything you want to wanna pick, and you can get your nose all out of joint on that. You can do that. You can do that. But why go that route? Why go that route? Why go that route? So uh, that's, re that's why he reminds us often, know your enemy. Know how Satan works. He wants us to get against each other. He wants us to tear this, ch this church up. He wants us to tear, tear your family up. He don't want you to be in charge. You know, you, you probably... You probably are the spiritual leader of your family. You probably have a more spiritual clout than you realize that. So, if we, if we do foul up, if we do fall, boy, look how many people it's going to affect. Look how much in your family. I know in my own mind some other things have happened to other people sometimes and I said, boy, that's having a devastating effect on their children and on their family and so forth. 
Well, we keep that in front of us. The Holy Spirit of God keeps that in front of us. All right. We want to be like uh, Rahab. Rahab got her family together. Jericho is going to be destroyed. The, uh, the Jews are going to come through there, and God, they're going to destroy Jericho because they're a wicked people. Vile, wicked, and a godly people. And so Jericho is going to be destroyed. She knows that. That's the reason why she hid those two spies. And she told the spies, I know that God's going to deliver us into your hand. But because I have hid you, he said, show mercy to us. Show mercy to us. He said, I believe in your God. And so they said, all right, when we come to here, you get your family together. And he said, we'll not destroy you. And that's exactly what happened when God destroyed uh, Jer uh, Jericho. Uh, there, uh, Rahab got all her, her, he says he got her father, mother, sister, brother, our near relatives and friends. He got them into her house. And when uh, uh, Jericho was destroyed, her house was left standing. Her house was left standing. So you and I be like that. We get other people into the household of faith. That's our main job. That's our main, main thing to do. Then sometimes we need to know how important we are. You're important in God's plan of things sometimes we people can get down on ourselves but that's because temporarily we forget who we are we get for forget who we are we're children of God we redeemed been redeemed by God himself we're blood brought brought, brought. we are uh, uh, the Bible says greater is in you that's in the world you and I are, are really important. Never forget that. We are overcomers. We don't have to be overcome by some things that tears other people down, by sin and so forth. We don't have to sin. We don't have to sin. We don't have to fall away. We do that when we not aware of what the provisions God offers and we are vulnerable when we let ourselves uh, play with sin. You can't play, the old saying is, you can't play with fire without being burned. You can't do that. You can't do that. It's impossible. Uh, uh, you just can't, so you can't, uh, you do wrong and expect good come out of it. You can't continually make bad decisions in life and expect good to come out of it. You can't live in sin or do sin and expect God to reward you. It don't work that way. It don't work that way. It never has worked that way. You'll be rewarded for doing right. You'll be rewarded for doing right. So we are uh, an important people. We're... Uh, 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 Remember, now, now you, you know, we, we're, I, and I believe this, we're living in the last days. Christians are going to be, and we're, we're going to feel some squeeze. They've already took away a lot of our rights, and all, there are already a lot of things you can't do, and, you, and it's going to be more so in the future. Going to be more so in the future. Remember in the old days when they had the Indians, uh, the, the settlers out west, and, and they taken these uh, wagon trains and all that stuff out west, and they run into a bunch of these Indians. And they'd have to circle the wagon. They'd have to circle the wagons and get in there and get get. We Christians are going to have to do that, you know. We Christians are going to have to be more serious about our Christianity. We are going to have to be more aware of other people and how we can help them and so forth. But we, we need to circle a wagon. We need to be close together here. Uh, God is looking for people who are looking for Him. And I'm always looking for God. I'm always wanting what's, what, what, he, what, he, what He wants, I want. Now, if my flesh gets out of hand, I'm going to do like Paul says. 
I'm going to beat my body into subjection. It takes more than just a little slap on the wrist sometimes. A little slap on the wrist, don't do it. You got, you got to get really rough on yourself. And uh, remember, too, uh, sometimes, sometimes we, we can justify things that we're doing wrong. Uh, we got to look at them too. That's why we continually read the Bible, continue to study the Bible, and pastor encourages us all the time. He continually reminds us to do right. And we're continually in there when we see these stories of what happened to other people when they do wrong. The same thing will happen to us if we do wrong that happened to those other people in the, in the Bible, David or whatever, whoever your story you read in there. You put yourself right in the middle of the story. I put myself right in the middle of all these things and you learn from them. So basically, uh, this probably is not meant so much for you. Maybe it's meant for somebody else. That's lesson tonight. God, just as those people and he, uh, back when Jesus was come, uh, it was been prophesied of him that he was coming uh, they knew a lot about him but when he was here he, he, they, he didn't do what they expected him to do that's, uh, this, uh, that's where a lot of people get in trouble I'm not going to do what you expect me to do you're not going to do what I'm what I expect you to do because you're an individual I'm an individual you know, we don't think alike but we expect each other to do what this book says. God loves us, and greater is he that's in you, that's in the world, and we're important, and a lot of people are dependent on us, so let's go out there and do right. Do right, doesn't make any difference, just do right. All right, let's pray, and then we'll uh, take up prayer requests. And our Father and our God, we praise your name for your goodness and your mercy, uh, your uh, book and your uh, teachings that you give us, Lord, is good for us. All these things, Lord, help us along. Help us grasp these things and grasp these truths. Be faithful to you, uh, Lord, and uh, we know you're coming back because you said you were. And these signs are pointing to that. So we're looking for you any day now. We thank you for being our great God. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. How about the prayer request? Anybody got any special prayer requests tonight? How are we? Oh, Velma. Brenda Kirby. Answer. Brenda Kirby. Uh, then Naomi Miller. I don't. I can't remember her name. But uh, she did. I need to continue prayer. 